and then okay. you can share your screen. Yep, right. you're recording. Now share screen. Okay. I think that... Perfect, and we're back where we were. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I want to welcome everyone uh, to this uh, lunchtime uh, webinar. We're going to be um, talking about the new OSC.org resource, uh, and I'd like to give you an overview of this um, this new uh, resource that is a companion to the Oscar rubric, and I, I just want to make sure that people are aware uh, that this new resource exists. Um, and so uh, I want to welcome everyone here from SUNY and from external to SUNY. We have a few folks um, that I see uh, that introduced themselves in the chat uh, at, uh, and said where they're from and their names. And so if you're just joining, if you, um, if you would just pop your name and, and where you're uh, tuning in from in the chat, then we can get a sense of who's in the room. Um, so yeah, this is uh, a new free openly licensed resource that has been developed, as I said, as a companion to the Oscar rubric uh, that you uh, are no doubt familiar with, and it significantly expands and enhances uh, the previous explanations and examples that correspond to each standard. And so um, this webinar, the intention is to give you an overview of, uh, of this tool. First, though, I'd like to um, acknowledge all of the um, contributions, both uh, to Oscar and to Oscar.org. Um, we um, uh, have a number of people over the history of um, uh, Oscar that have contributed to the tool. Uh, and so um, there on the screen, you can see the Oscar.org team, the OLC team that we've been working with. And then um, over the years, the, the history of the development teams for Oscar, we had a number of um, project working groups that assisted us uh, during the beginning of, of the development of Oscar back in December uh, 2013 when we started. There was a core team, there was a librarian team, and a multimedia team. And we just want to acknowledge and recognize the folks that contributed to the Oscar rubric. And then also, of course, the folks that um, have been working on refining and um, um, enhancing uh, the Oscar.org resource. Uh, Oscar.org is, as I said, an, intended as a companion to the Oscar rubric. Uh, and it, as I also said, it's free and openly licensed and um, you can uh, really use it in, uh, in a couple of different ways. You can, you can use it as a um, as a website, so you can come in and and browse the um, uh, the standards uh, just independently of uh, of any course review process or of the use of the rubric. Um, but as I said, it's intended to enhance uh, the the rubric itself. And um, so I want to show the PDF of the rubric. Let me see how I can get over there. It's here. So you may um, uh, have seen the OLC PDF of the rubric, and uh, this is the latest version of it available for download uh, on the OLC website. And if you hover on this PDF over each of the standards, you get a direct link uh, to um, to a standard, uh, the, whichever one you, you've clicked on. And so I just wanted to show how it's integrated into the rubric so that you can see what the intention is there. So as you are completing a rubric uh, um, you or reviewing a course, and if you wanted additional ideas uh, for a particular standard, you would simply hover over the standard and then click on that standard and it would take Take you to a specific page in Oscar.org for that standard. So um, 
so I'm going to go back to Oscar.org so that you can see um, that it um, you know, can function as a standalone, but it's also, uh, you know, each of the, each of the um, groups of standards, it's categorized into six categories, just like it's categorized on the rubric. And then you can navigate from the OSCAR.org site specifically to, uh, to standards. The standards give you more in-depth explanations of each of the standards. They provide uh, examples and ideas of how to address each standard and um, they provide citations um, uh, and information uh, from research that support each standard and then there's also uh, additional resources and the opportunity to contribute and I'm going to go over these in um, in more depth. I just want to remind folks about how to get that PDF. <coughs> so um, um, the um, access to the rubric, oh, thanks, Aaron. The access to the rubric is there. And what that really does, oops, sorry. What that does is give you, it, it um, brings up um, a form and all you have to do is put your contact information in there and hit submit and the PDF will, will come up right away for you. Um, so I just wanted to remind folks how to download the actual rubric from the OLC website and um, Aaron popped the link there in the in the chat for you. Uh, so let me look, let me help you look at the organization of um, Of how this uh, this site is organized. So like I said, each of the um, groups of standards are categorized according to how they're categorized in the rubric. So you have course overview and information, course technology and tools, and so forth. And Alex, yeah, sorry to interrupt. You got to share your screen again. It went back to you. Oh, okay. Share screen. Sorry about that. I don't know how I undid it. All right, there, there you should is. see. <coughs> Thanks. Um, so when you when you hover over the examples and evidence um, menu item, you see that it's six different categories, and um, and like I said, they correspond to the categories that you will see in the rubric itself. And uh, you can navigate, like I said, straight from this menu, or you can on on each um, on each page it has uh, and um, a way to navigate to the standards uh, from there as well. So. Um, so there's a couple of different ways to kind of navigate the site. Um, so let's look at a stand, one of the standards and we can go through how each standard is organized. So you'll see it's labeled by its number. There's 50 standards in OSCAR. Uh, this is the, um, what the standard actually is. Um, you will um, get a, um, um, a, a, an in-depth explanation of the standard. Uh, so, you know, to give you some more um, well-rounded understanding of what this standard is specifically addressing. In this particular case, I, I selected standard 41, and this really um, uh, has to do with uh, building a sense of class community. And so it goes through explaining um, in some detail what, um, what that is. And then it provides um, a... Um, well, actually, let me go back here because I want to show you the video. You may, if you are, are within SUNY or have ever been to one of our summits, you, over the last couple of years, you will have noticed that we are, um, 
collecting videos from uh, from participants uh, at the conference. And uh, last year, we collected examples of how people address e each specific standard, and we put these together in a video collection and have um, uh, a, put into each of the standards the associate the, the video um, uh, that we produced for each standard. So I'm just going to play one for a little bit of one for you now. Can you guys hear it? Great, thanks for that. The classroom community and particularly that last piece of trust in a classroom is really important online because we don't often see our students. We may have run into them at an event or a campus activity, but not in the classroom. <coughs> so creating that relationship where students feel comfortable asking questions and where they are open to reaching out to either other students or to the faculty member can be a lot more of a challenge. There's not just a couple minutes at the end of class where they feel like, oh, I'm just gonna go up there and ask a question real quick. So we really have to be intentional and foster that relationship building, making students feel welcome to ask us questions. And the types of activities that we can include in this, really those discussion boards, reaching out to students and the feedback that we give on their assignments can open those doors and make students really feel welcome and open. They don't sit next to a student, they don't see the student's face, uh, they don't hear their voices necessarily. And so, and because the same reason a faculty member might put their online class on the back burner, a student will do that too. If the student has kids at home and has um, a job that they're working on, they might forget about the course um, very easily. And so you want them to feel connected to the other classmates. You want them to feel a sense of obligation to the other classmates. Um, I use discussion in my class. They, I, I set up really clear parameters where they have to log in three days a week. Um, they have to have uh, a particular number of responses to other students in the discussion forums. Um, the icebreaker right away, they need to feel like they're part of a community because they can feel very alienated in their computer, at their computer, in their home, wherever their home is, away from all the other students. So, um, super important to do that. So, I have an icebreaker my first um, uh, week. I also encourage them to use photos. Uh, so, if they're not comfortable putting a face uh, to their name, I say, you know, then, you know, a picture of your cat or something that you feel kind of represents you. But that just gives them a little bit more sense of that embodiment for that student. And I think it works, you know, I, I, um, I also split them into small groups, too, and I think that creates that small community feeling as well. Building a sense of class community is extremely important because the students need to feel comfortable working with each other, answering each other's questions, um, being uh, helpful to one another. Uh, at first, I think students don't believe they can learn from other students, but if the activities are created uh, in, a, in, a, in an appropriate way, they can learn from each other and they realize that um, somewhere into the course and they start interacting a little bit more and then they start teaching each other. So they learn from each other and then they realize, oh, I might know something that, they could, that could help this other student. So I think putting the activities together in a way that gets them talking first right away, like in the icebreaker is really important. I start out by talking about why people read literature. I teach literature and composition course. And, and then I ask them to introduce themselves, <coughs> tell what their favorite kind of book is to read, what was the last book they read, and if they have a favorite author. And a lot of my students are um, parents, single parents or otherwise. And they like to talk about how they don't have time to really read. They used to read a lot more, but now Dr. Seuss is their favorite author, and you know they're uh, um, used to reading children's books rather than anything else. But they say they're looking forward to reading in my class because it, they have to do it and that they hope they'll enjoy it too. So I do that as an icebreaker, and they really start talking. But so I wanted to um, share with you about four minutes of this video so that you could see that we have a variety of people that are contributing to the videos and that they have some concrete examples 
to share um, that, that are ideas uh, that either the instructor who's going through the self-assessment can use to improve their course or that an instructional designer who's working with um, with online faculty could um, sort of mine um, as ideas for recommendations either for their review or directly to the instructors um, so each standard is set up in this exact uh, same way. There will be um, a review, a, um, a, a very full explanation of the standard. There will be a micro learning video that's designed to explain the standard and share examples. And then there will be um, references um, that provide uh, related research and reputable evidence that support the standard. Then there will be a list of ideas and suggestions to improve or address the standard um, you know either as a supplement to or to inform reviewers or faculty recommendations or instructional designers recommendations in the review uh, or for ideas um, it, you know for uh, for course design uh, and then there might be um, uh, additional ideas either from uh, UCF's topper uh, repository, online teaching pedagogical repository, or from, and I'll show you uh, if I can get up there, and I'll show you what that is um, if you're unfamiliar with, um, with topper. Um, let's see if I can get the uh, link. There's that resource. And then there's also the um, OLC's Effective Practices uh, database of, of resources. So I wanted to make sure to mention that as we um, uh, develop this resource, we, uh, and, and in partnership with both OLC and Topper, we um, reviewed their um, effective practices and incorporated them into this tool as additional ideas. Um, so then we um, also have an area where there where you can explore some related resource and uh, then um, we also have the opportunity to for the community who's using um, either Oscar or, or this resource Oscar.org to um, have some discussion around uh, each standard and then to also contribute um, uh, make some suggestions for additions uh, to the research, to the examples, to additional resources. So I wanted to make sure to point out, um, you know, the, the um, suggestions for additions. It, it, that link just takes you to a form uh, that asks, you know, some basic information and, and asks you to submit your ideas for consideration. And then um, uh, the comments um, are simply, you know, um, you know, like blog comments at the bottom of each post. And so I, I just want to um, reiterate that each of the standards is set up in this manner. Um, it's consistent uh, from standard to standard. And, um, and it's set up, you know, to make it easy to be able to find uh, what it is that you're looking for uh, and um, enhanced in ways uh, that provide much more um, rich um, information and detail uh, than we previously had. So I'm going to pause for a sec and just make sure I've shown you everything so far that I wanted to, and I think I have, um, and see if there's any questions uh, from, uh, from anyone. Were you aware that this, um, that this resource existed? And that it was tied into the the rubric. Okay, great. <coughs> All right, some I see Brandon was awesome. All right, great. Hey, Keith. 
<laughs> all right, see you later. <laughs> All right, so um, you can also search the standards. Uh, I mean, I think it's pretty straightforward as a as a web uh, resource, and then um, as the resource that's integrated straight into the Oscar um, the Oscar rubric. Um, and I'm really happy that. Um, uh, you know that uh, we're getting the word out and would appreciate any um, help uh, from you in getting the word out that this resource exists both for faculty who could use it formatively as they are designing their online courses and then in any kind of a online course quality review process either for the instructor themselves if they're doing it as a self-assessment or for instructional designers or other um, team members that might be uh, conducting the course review uh, either independently or as a team um, so uh, so yeah I'm, I'm eager to get the word out about the resource um, I will be doing this webinar again next month to try and uh, get um, um, the word out more and and so you can help us spread the word too um, we are very interested in um, having some dialogue around the standards and in having the community um, within SUNY and beyond SUNY contribute to our uh, list of suggestions and and recommendations and citations and so forth um, we're hoping that we can build a rich a repository um, that's that complements um, uh, the other repositories that are out there and that really will function as a as an idea resource for both uh, online faculty new and experienced as well as instructional designers librarians technologists anyone who is helping to support um, high quality online um, uh, course design so um, without um, uh, you know, I, 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 want, I just wanted to mention at the end here that if, uh, because, thank you for coming and participating in the workshop. And if you um, would like to collect a badge for, um, for your participation today, um, we have an, um, uh, a, com a community participant badge that you can earn. And uh, let me see if I can get the claim code over to you. It is one e one. That's the claim code, and it's credly dot com. Not crudely, credly. <laughs> All right, let's see if that works. All right. Thank you very much, and um, I'll stay here for a sec. If uh, if anyone has any additional questions, I'd be happy to um, to answer them. Hey, Bill, I see you're there. Um, thanks for everyone. Thanks for coming. And um, if you have any questions, just let me know. I'm going to hang out here for a little bit, but otherwise, thanks for joining. Thanks, Alex. I didn't see any additional questions, but I'll have you go ahead and stop the recording also. Okay, so Same button, I think. In order to do that, I have to stop sharing, I think. Right, right. And then stop the recording.